25 years ago, a group of very concerned, kind-hearted, incredibly generous people got together and wanted to start a museum. Uh, Sonoma had a, had a big art uh, group here in town. It occurred to me that it would be a possibility here to start an art museum. I said, well, you know, I'll get a hold of some other people in town and got a positive response from all of them. The idea of becoming involved in a community group was, was not something that I felt was high on my list. But in a series of meetings at various police people's houses and coffee shops, this idea began to grow. I would go home and talk to my husband and I'd say, I can't believe these people think they're going to start a museum up here, but they did. Charlotte Lamb, who was one of the co-founders, she was very uh, positive. She was spectacularly interested and Jim Callahan was very instrumental. Lois Gordon, came from the San Francisco museums and brought with her Kathy Hodgson. I mean, we had a group of people who were unapologetic cheerleaders for art everywhere. It was, it was a wonderful team. I saw the original Franklin Furniture Store and you could see the possibilities in it, but today it is a miracle what happened, it really is. It still had the old Franklin Furniture sign in great big letters up on the top of the front wall. But it had been vacant for quite some time. And I remember distinctly walking by this storefront and saying to myself, this is obvious. The curtain came down for me and it's like, this is the place. Sonoma Collects was the very first exhibit we had. And that was before the building was built like this. And that was reaching out into the community and there were a lot of art lovers up here at the time and borrowing pieces from them. And it began the membership base of the whole organization. That exhibit in February of 99 was in the midst of one of those atmospheric rivers and it rained and it rained and it rained and then three days before the show was supposed to open, the water is running down the walls. And this roof is like an arched uh, shape and it has parapet walls that stick up on either side of the arch. The drains that are there clogged and the roof started filling up with, uh, the, with water. There was four feet of water on the roof and we came about that close from having the whole thing collapse. And so the two of us went up there and waded literally into our thighs and dug out the, the blockage and the, you know, the water just flew out of there. And then spent the next couple of days with shop vacs, drying the place out with fans and heaters before we bring all this expensive artwork in here. <laughs> it was amazing. What Franklin Furniture had is its half block location off of the plaza. For years, the pedestrian activity around the plaza really was isolated to the plaza itself and was difficult to pull pedestrians down the side streets. And locating the museum here, I thought, was an ideal um, concept. They chose this old furniture store, which is an absolutely perfect space because it's wide open. The bowstring trusses, the concrete floor, the exposed mechanical systems and things like that. We really saw that as an asset. It's super flexible. We can bring in walls, we can move portable walls around. It's a big open warehouse type space, which is just fabulous for showing art. We made a decision early not to acquire a collection. If you don't acquire your own collection, you have to borrow it. And in order to borrow it, you have to assure the people from whom you're borrowing it that the artwork will be taken care of. So we needed to have a secure location with environmental controls and proper lighting. 
Michael Ross and Mark Zoll are the guys who took that and made this. People may be surprised to learn that we actually developed an exterior gallery to the museum. And it, that exterior gallery is now occupied by the museum store. The first exhibition was ambitious. From San Francisco's Fine Art Museum, sculptures by Rodin. We borrowed a Rodin collection, and Lois Gordon was instrumental in it. And I got a call from one of the conservators who I knew, Elizabeth Cornu. And she said, what is this museum? We're going to loan our Rodin collection to this place that we've never heard of. So I went through everything, and I told her they had just begun to renovate. And we had HVSC that could actually be suitable, and we were working to museum standards. So she finally agreed that we could do this exhibition. And once she got up here, she thought it was fantastic. And of course, the opening exhibit of Rodin was just like a knockout, fantastic exhibit. What's so great about this space is that this space provides a home for contemporary art that people don't have to drive 50 miles to get to. This is a community that really needs a cultural boost, and that's what the museum did, and it was immediate. You could feel it. One of the things we dreamed about when we started this was that we would be able to provide a resource to the public school system. And they're not just public schools, all schools. ARTS program is in every fourth and fifth grade in Sonoma Valley. We send teaching artists into the schools and teach kids lessons that are inspired by the work that we have here in the museum. The kids come into the museum, they create artwork based on what they've learned and what they're inspired by. And then their artwork is on the walls right along with the professional artists that we have here in the museum. For many of them, this is the first time they're coming to a museum, so that's exciting. Very exciting for them and it's exciting for me as their teacher. It's a really special opportunity for me to go as a visiting teaching artist and to have the opportunity to work with the kids. This program is very valuable and I'm happy to be a part of it. And I am glad that the museum takes strides to believe in me as an artist too. Kids need art in their lives. I think they need it just as much as math and science. When I see groups of school kids here, it just warms my heart. I, I think it's one of the best attributes of this uh, museum foundation to reach out to all different age groups in our community, and particularly our young artists. I think Sonoma is lucky to have a wonderful museum like this. I honestly do, and I think that it brings things out into the community. I think we've managed to reach a goal like that. We have exhibitions now in the plaza every couple of years. SVMA's mission, building community around art, means that we are out building bridges to communities through art, and through art exhibits, and through educational programs, and through all sorts of workshops that we're doing. We had an exhibit here called We Are Still Here. And the exhibit focused on the Pomo traditional artworks, but in by contemporary artists. It allowed us to see certain kinds of work that they do that are, is very special to them, that is wider and deeper and more spiritual than, than I ever knew. Some of the work that I'm most proud of is the work that we've done highlighting and giving voice to communities that otherwise are not even heard. Voices like women artists, like Native American artists, Asian American artists, African American artists. This has been a focus of our work. Every time I think we've done something great, we do something better. Particularly, I'd like to just cite that Linda Keaton, who was our executive director here, has done a really great job in bringing people in who I never thought would be in this museum. Women and abstraction was at the Whitney and it's coming here. Well, the Whitney Museum is pretty darn good. 
It just shows how a small community with people who are committed to doing something, bring all those skills together. It's amazing what you can do. This community is really, is really strong in that regard. Magic happens almost every day here. One of the ways that it's most clear to me is when the kids are in the museum and they connect with something and it's the look on their faces and the excitement in their eyes and the way they interact with each other, with their teachers, with their teaching artists, that's where the magic happens.